Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night, April 8th, 2025 to date. About 9.55 p.m. California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.5 into uh, Southern California. Let's go ahead and take a look, see where that 1.5 is at. Looks like it's just around the uh, greater Los Angeles area. Uh, a little uncertain on to which fault system this is occurring on, but a little 1.5 about 10 miles deep underneath this area. Getting a handful of earthquakes across the Los Angeles region in general, including a couple more earthquakes here, something we haven't seen here since last year. Uh, a couple earthquakes on the Puente Hills thrust, thrust Fault. Now that's a thrust fault that runs directly underneath Los Angeles. And uh, it's been a couple thousands of years since they've had a uh, earthquake of a considerable size there. Uh, they believe it's about 7.5 magnitude earthquake that can occur on the Puente Hills Thrust Fault. Now, it's not listed here on the USGS map, but it does extend roughly around where we're seeing the earthquake activity uh, westward here. I believe maybe over towards the Beverly Hills region. And uh, that's capable of producing a 7.5. Last year, there was a, a series of earthquakes here, uh, very small ones, but uh, kind of drew to light the um, importance of being um, aware of the faults that are underneath the Los Angeles area. The Th uh, Puente Hills Thrust Fault, definitely capable of producing some uh, significant uh, earthquake activity out there. Uh, so that's what's stirring up right now. Uh, and this earthquake, 1.5, a little uncertain on to which fault system that uh, is occurring on. But uh, either way, it looks like things are starting to light up out here across the Los Angeles area. A couple smaller earthquakes also uh, really close to the San Andreas Fault that's on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. And uh, some down south here along the Brawley Seismic Zone. Nothing big. But we are noticing a little bit of uptick there across the Los Angeles area today. San Francisco, uh, a couple of smaller earthquakes as well. Really nothing major going on. The Clear Lake Volcanic Field got uh, about 73 earthquakes here. Not related to volcanic activity. Obviously, there's some heated areas below uh, the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, but there's geothermal plants out here, probably 20 or 30 of them uh, positioned around the Cobb Mountain area, and they take advantage of the heated areas below by injecting raw sewage into the region underneath the area to create some type of steam it's a crazy green energy type of deal but uh yeah that's there's also earthquake activity that uh, comes with the uh, process there pretty crazy northern california one earthquake here at the southern end of cascadia subduction zone let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map here this evening where we're looking at uh, about 88 epicenters of trimmer mainly underneath the oregon area Really nothing major going on there for now. Pacific Northwest relatively quiet as well. Uh, the rest of the country, some, over, some earthquake activity around the uh, oil fields, the gas and oil fields out there of Texas and Oklahoma. Nothing new to report there. It just goes hand in hand. Uh, some smaller earthquake activity here around the Taiwan area and Japan. Two earthquakes there, 5.4 and a 5-pointer. Obviously, we're increasing the strain out there against the Nankai Trough. Got to watch that. That region right here is very capable of producing a mega quake. Alaska relatively quiet aside from some, you know, typical movement up there. Uh, Hawaii got uh, some, let's see here, some older activity around the low high seamount. Nothing new really to report there across the area, across the South America region. Got this odd earthquake out here in the southeast central Pacific Ocean off the plate boundary. Looks like that movement today added further strain here eastward along the Peru Chile Trench with, uh, well, you can see here, 4.4, 4.4, 5-pointer. Uh, relatively deep earthquakes here into the Peru Chile Trench. Got to watch that. That may stir up some further large-scale activity here in the hours and potentially uh, well, days ahead. New Zealand, see what's going on down here across New Zealand. I heard it's cold down there. Getting some word from Timothy, our moderator here on the channel, that it's quite cold. Of course, that's very subjective, right? Um, but who knows? It, it's, it's heading into wintertime down there, right? Some deeper activity across the Tonga Trench. A couple deep earthquakes. A couple threes across the New Zealand region. And uh, there's an activity up around Taiwan and Japan. We'll definitely keep an eye up there for some further movement. Uh, a little bit of spotty activity down across the Indian Ocean out there in the zipper boundary. Uh, it's not really a zipper. It kind of looks like they're on the oceanic crust, but it's a uh, separation of the seafloor. 
uh, right there around that triple point boundary. Also a 4.2 up around, uh, looks like the Turkey region, 4.1 USGS reporting there for that earthquake. Space weather activity? Well, you know, I wish I could say we're looking at some decent flaring potential, but I've dropped mine here to a 1% chance for an X flare. About a 50, probably about 40 to 50% chance for an M flare. I'm glad these guys are dropping their flare threat here because literally there's not a whole lot of potential out there for stronger flaring. Here's a current look from the SDO NASA Gov website showing the magnetic complexity of the sunspots. And right now, well, uh, there's not a whole lot here, folks, uh, unfortunately. There's a newer region up here, above 4055, that's developed. But looking at the latest imagery here, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. A lot of times, uh, you know, these sunspots can ramp up in a little, just a little short period. Uh, so we'll watch that overnight, see if it doesn't grow. Uh, but there's really not a whole lot here as far as any solar flaring goes. No major roars in the forecast. Uh, a little bit of uptick earlier today, but, uh, you know, it's just, it comes and goes here as far as the KP index. But no major, no major roars there in the forecast. Storm Prediction Center, no major severe weather out until maybe about day three. Looks like, um, are we still live? Yes, we are, but what's going on with the Storm Prediction Center here? Okay, it just looks a little weird here. It doesn't show that. There we go. That was just a little odd. Uh, Thursday of this week here looks like maybe a slight risk for some severe weather out here across a well, number of states we'll check back on that though as we get a little bit closer to the time period extended forecast models out here this kind of goes with the uh, long-term potential supercell composite parameters um, you know, th there's a favorable pattern that looks like towards the end of this month into the beginning of May where we could see severe weather out across Texas and Oklahoma, the traditional tornado alley regions here. So we'll watch that uh, in the days ahead. Not a whole lot of precipitation out here for California right now. I think it's coming to an end. We've had a pretty decent wet winter out here. Um, high pressure setting in across the West Coast. Look at that, bringing maybe maybe the first hundreds down here across Arizona. Uh, that high pressure parked right over Utah. Uh, we'll probably be in the upper 80s out here in Northern California this coming week. This is for Wednesday and Thursday. Massive high pressure building up across the West Coast. A little bit of low pressure forming out here. And that will be that severe weather maker potentially as we head towards the uh, uh, Thursday and Friday time period. After that, uh, well... Ah, uh, man, not really seeing anything major coming up here, but uh, we'll just kind of have to watch it and see how it goes. No rain forecasted out there for California right now. Uh, it is getting, you know, to that time period here where things are going to start drying out. I'm thankful that we've had a wet winter, let me tell you. Uh, it was looking a little sketchy for a little bit, but things played out, and I'm happy that they did. All right, folks, um, I think that's about it. I uh, hope everyone has a good night out there. Double check the seismograph stations. I've been watching them. They've been offline here for a little bit, and most of it's the, um, well, the plate boundary stations are working, Parkfield, Barrett, Mendocino, but uh, some of these international ones here are offline. We'll watch that overnight. Uh, if they do not show back up here in the morning, then we'll have to do a reset of the uh, Global Earthquake Explorer program and then we can add them back on. But uh, for now, just just got three working up there. Hopefully they come back. All right. Have yourself a good evening, folks. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning for the Wednesday morning update. Take care.